Hey, audio everyone. Lost Litter here, back in action for more whatever I do here um, on my vlog, as per usual. And uh, there is something that I would like to talk about. I'm not sure if I said this before or if I was ever on this kind of ramble before, but I really, really love the idea of believing in yourself and putting it forward that way. And... I've had a number of debates and debacles going on whenever I've mentioned this online before, how much distaste there is for this actual saying of believe in yourself and you could do anything uh, type of situation. But by all means, I think people are looking at this saying a little too naive in comparison to how I've always perceived it. I never perceived believe in yourself and you could do anything as a sort of like, I wish upon a star and suddenly, boom, that happens. Uh, it, it's never been that case. It, it's largely been, I need to have the confidence in myself to figure out if I could do this. And just because I don't do it the first time doesn't mean I won't be able to do the second, third, or fourth, or fifth, or continue on and on and on and on. It's a larger way of saying, and a simpler way of saying, I could do it. And I think that's, that's uh, a lot of like, it's a loaded statement for sure. And I think there's a lot of people out there that just don't see it as that loaded statement. They see it as a naive thing and just people look at it as a sort of, okay, sure, pff, whatever. Yeah, you, you can do whatever. Just like what you hear from people. Because a lot of times in anime and cartoons and things like that, when they say that they can uh, believe in themselves where they are like, I believe it. And then they suddenly achieve their victory because they believed it all of a sudden. Uh, that's not what I'm saying here. Um, I, I think you saying to yourself, I believe I could do this. I, I believe in myself. I believe this will happen for me. Those things are a constant thing said day in, day out, day in, day out over and over and over again to the point where it's kind of a mantra to you in that sort of way but not in the sense that you actually say it but in the sense that you feel it you live it i don't think a lot of people out there ever expect themselves to be a professional uh baseball player football player actor um youtuber all these things uh, there's just the sense of i can do this i believe i could do this i'm going to do this it's in first part of you doing something, of you going ahead and going off to that situation. And I, I think that's what attracts me the most, attracts me the most <laughs> when it comes to these kind of statements. It's telling yourself, yes, I could do this. I, I will do this. I will continue to do this. And I, that's something that I've always, always loved. And it's always hard to see if you could do something later on in the future and whatnot, because things may look bleak, things may not turn out the way that they do, and a lot of things that happen are going to be failures when it comes to this kind of belief system and it comes to you doing something. Failure is a large part of what makes success a build. It's a large part of what makes people keep going and going, and some people failing outright, and that's fine. Sometimes people are not built for that kind of failure rejection system that is placed out there in the world because the world is not exactly a friendly place to everybody. And I'm pretty sure everybody in the freaking world knows that as much as other people would like to think otherwise. It's more of a matter of we want to make the world a better place. We want to keep things the way that are as friendly as possible, that is as trustworthy as possible. But that's not always the case. I mean, if you look at something like getting a job, just because you say, I believe I could get a job doesn't mean you're going to get a job. What getting a job entails, in all honesty, it's about 20% effort, in all honesty. If you're going to ask me hardcore, what does it take for me to get a job? Well, 20% of the way that you're going to get a job is by just diligence. I'm going to apply to a bunch of places and whatnot. A lot of people make you say it's all about hitting the pavement. It's all about doing job research and finding the right one and all this and that. No, absolutely not. That's 20% of whatever the hell you're getting yourself into. And yeah, people get a job that way. But 
As someone that has been unemployed for like three years, I know for a fact that is not the case in point. Not in the day, day and age. No, no, no. 50% is luck on how you get a job. Just someone going in, looking at your application, looking at you the right way, and going, hey, you know what? I like you. There you go. Boom. Job done. What's the other 30% in honesty when it comes to getting a job? It is knowing the right people. That's it. That is all it is. 20% of that is you actually trying and doing something. And by all means, it's still technically a percentile that someone could do something and actually change the outcome. But there's so much luck into that factor. There's so much reference that you need in all honesty. And it really is a crushing thing that everyone, I think, faces uh, in this day and age. And that's the only way I could really equate it to something more ambitious, as it were. If you're an artist out there, I'm sure you, you feel this quite often and whatnot, that when you put work out there and it's not getting enough likes, it's not getting enough retweets, it's not getting enough exposure, as it were, it, it, it's harder and harder to keep going on. But if you had the belief that you want to be a professional artist and you want to keep moving on and becoming better and better in your work, you practice more, you do more, you constantly, constantly try to figure out how you get your work out there. It's a set belief to make something else happen. And that, in all honesty, I, th I think being an artist is like freaking 80%. Like, just keep going at it. Just just keep trying to figure out what you're doing wrong, things that you could do and whatnot. And the other 20% is just like advertising and like figuring out what you do, uh, with certain, like, things and, like, getting, like, hot topics going on and whatnot. Things like that. But largely the people that are out there that get it, they're very passionate. They're very, like, they go at it constantly and constantly. It just, it's all those things. But I'm not one to really talk here. I, I'm not an artist. I'm this, this YouTuber slash not YouTuber slash vlogger slash whatever the hell I'm trying to be. I don't know. But it's what happens. And as someone that's transgendered, I have to, I had to come to this understanding within myself that I'm a girl, that I want to be a girl, that this is something that I don't have the same kind of feelings and emotions that other people have. And I'm not trying to make it seem like it's a big old anime thing or something, or I'm trying to make it like a lesser situation in terms of things. I don't know how else to quite explain but I'm sure there could be some negative vibes in terms of what I'm saying here. Uh, by all means, I don't mean it. What I do mean is that I had to believe first and foremost who I was and who I wanted to be in order to start even considering how to treat it, how to make this whole entire thing work out for me. And that's what I had to do, in all honesty. I had to figure out what was the right channels to go through. I had to go see a therapist. I had to go see my primary care. I had to figure out what the heck an endocrinologist is. Uh, I had to do all these things to just figure out what I do to get to the result that I want. And there's still so much more I need to learn. And there's so much more I need to know about being a woman, effectively. Uh, being a woman in today's society in this particular situation where dresses, uh, mannerisms, I'm trying to think, I was like, politeness? No, it's not politeness, it's mannerisms, uh, and various other gender-esque roles like that. But at the same time, shifting gears, I have to shift between that and have more feminist ideals and things like that to make sure that I'm not harping myself too much on, like, I have to be this way, this one particular way, I, I have to be just the way that I want to be. So me... Believing in myself to be a girl, setting out forth to all these other little things and whatnot. And it causes a lot of doubt with other situations. And it's all these little situations here that I had to keep readjusting what it means to be a woman, what it means to be male to female, what it means to be myself, in all honesty. And that's really where it comes down to, is just trying to figure out what the heck I do. What I guess I'm trying to say here before I start screwing with my messages and whatnot that I've been screwing up just trying to say here is I just need to believe in who I am and 
continue to do so. Because if I stop believing in something, I may not be able to actually be able to do it. Like, as soon as you stop believing in something, do you really continue on to do it? Do you continue on to do that thing? If you believe that you were not going to get paid with your next paycheck, would you continue on doing your job the way that you do it? Would you even go to your job? I don't think you would. And that's the same kind of situation that I have here, is just, if I don't believe that I'm a girl, then what is this all for? Why would I keep doing it? And I guess this is... This is like a like a hard way of saying it because I'm like I'm not trying to make it as a trivial thing. I don't think someone's belief is a trivial thing in all honesty. If you were to ask me truthfully, but I could understand how someone would be like, "Oh, you just believe Psh, whatever." Like that's just your belief that could be changed on a fact. But a lot of beliefs they kind of influences facts. They they just kind of do. Someone looked at Pluto and was like, hey, this doesn't seem exactly right. Let's look further into it. And they were able to prove that Pluto was not actually a planet because of various factors that we had with other planets out there and whatnot and just comparing the data. I'm not saying that you can make all your belief fact, but rather belief could lead you to a fact of such a thing. Just because we have that fact as an objective doesn't always mean... The fact is objective. It's it's more so just what we know right then and there. That's what we believe to be as a fact. So things could change. Science changes all the time. Evolution changes all the time. So it's just that sort of situation where it's just like, do I have doubt in what this is? If I do, can I figure that out? It's a weird system in which doubt and belief are both one and the same and yet not. But I think it really helps drive a lot of people home into that situation. And I think believing in yourself is probably the biggest factor when it comes to people doing whatever they can do. And it's something that I've really looked at cartoons and I've always, always loved about them is that they always have that moment of just, like, believe in yourself and whatnot. You could do something. And I know it's always, almost instantaneously, that they do do something. And I think that really, really cuts down on the whole entire belief system. Because, truly, in all honesty, what makes you believing in something an amazing goal is it doesn't happen over time. It could take years. It could take months. It could take days. It could take... Like, so many times, you could be almost dead and just, it happens right there. And that's what makes, I think, believing yourself, believing in things that you can believe in, truly amazing and truly special, is that you've held on to this belief despite everything. Despite people telling you otherwise and whatnot. And it just, it, it has that powerful effect. And, of course, I'm not saying that one person that believes in something can make the whole world doubt or something like that, or or that doubt does not hinder someone's belief in something. But I do think that there's a general personal belief that can overcome it, that, that someone can have that much of belief in themselves or belief in things. There's going to be people that say no. There's going to be people that doubt you. And you have to make sure you have your belief, have your confidence, have your willingness to do things as as that driving force and i don't think it's stated enough in all honesty and that's that's kind of what i wanted to say today it, it's just that it's just i want to keep on continuing on and keep on believing in things that i could do and that includes personal life that includes uh, the streaming stuff that i do this includes uh all the things i want to do later on in life I want to be this better person than I am now. I want to be able to be successful in some sort of regard when it comes to this, this, I don't know, I guess a hobby of mine, I want to say, is probably the best way I could say it. In all honesty, I don't really want to consider it a hobby, in all honesty. I, I consider it as a bit of a career path, in all honesty, but uh, I guess that is naive of me saying uh, more than anything else, but it's my belief. I'll keep going at it, see where it goes. And it's my belief that uh, 
I'm gonna be a girl and I'm gonna be all womanly and all that such and all that jazz. It's something that I have to make sure that I have this thought process throughout the whole entire way. And so far, so many people have tried to stop me in terms of medically, like making sure that I want to go through with this. And in all honesty, I've never had a doubt in my mind about that. Like, as soon as, as, soon as someone, someone says something, like, oh, you're not going to be able to have kids. I'm like, I don't really care. I can adopt. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm going to be inept or some other crap or all these other things. I could have problems down the line. I could have blood pressure problems and whatnot. Like, I'm like, I kind of already do, so psh, whatever. I don't care in terms of medical health. Uh, how I land on situations. I, I, I care about how... I care about how I am as a person, how I feel as myself. I, I don't ever think just being healthy is enough. I think doing what you want to do is enough. And I'm not saying that I have to eat like a hamburger every day and my cholesterol goes up all the way, just more so I should be able to eat, like, one of those things and then figure out how the heck I do it. That's, that's really all it comes down to. I'm not trying to be this person that kills all the joy that I used to have in my life just to set serve, set a goal of something else. It, it doesn't seem like that's a proper way to live. So, I just want to be who I am. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is not the case when it comes to... um our U.S. of A as of right now. So, um, if you're out there, if you're out in the U.S., I, I certainly do hope you vote because it is important to put some of your beliefs, some of your convictions into action. And one of the best ways to do that is vote. And I understand that voting is not always present in terms of, like, automatic feedback. It's not always... It doesn't always feel... Like you actually did something to change something. And that's just kind of the system that we're in right now. And admittedly enough, there's a lot of shady business that happens throughout this whole entire state. Throughout all these states that we have here. And it just... I'm not saying put your faith in the system. What I'm saying is if voting doesn't work, if truly not that voting doesn't work, then... Figuring out the next step and what you want to do is the clear choice, <laughs> in all honesty. I'm not saying commit any kind of violence or anything like that, but there's actions you could take that you could be more involved in with the government. There's more things that you could do than just vote, but voting is the least amount you could do. And I certainly hope you all do it, because um, when it comes to me personally, my life is being threatened as we speak. And it sucks because it's such a mellow sort of way of saying this. And admittedly enough, when it comes to um, immigration and whatnot, legal immigrants and whatnot, they're already on the chopping board as is. Uh, them being these camps and whatnot is, is awful. Completely and utterly awful. And I don't mention this enough. And we as a society kind of ignore it. And in all honesty, it's kind of super atrocious and awful. And... I don't know rightly how to stop it aside from just mentioning it. And even then people are, they're not exactly willing to listen. That's kind of the point though, isn't it though? You got to bring up the ugly warts in order to stop the warts itself. You don't just ignore it. That's, that's how you, you, uh, aggravate, um, diseases and whatnot as you ignore them and they continue to grow worse and worse. Like my acute bronchitis that I had. Didn't go to a doctor for like two weeks three weeks, I think. I think it was like two and a half weeks, honestly. Because I was like, it should go away. It should go away. I feel like I'm getting better. I feel like I'm getting better. Never felt better. And then just, it got worse. And my lungs got bad. I certainly don't want that to happen in America, but I, I, I can't say that it hasn't already been happening, because it kind of has. And I don't want to make this a super big deal, but please, if you have the ability to vote, please vote. Peace.